Hello, my friends. My name is Ryan. Welcome to Poetry in My Bedroom. Today I have a short poem for you guys. It is by the famous 20th century poet Robert Frost. The name of the poem is Fire and Ice. I'm going to read it to you as I read it. I hope that you guys conjure up your own images and um, tell me what you think about it down in the comments. I'll read it and then I'll tell you what I think about it and what it brings to my mind and that'll be all. A very short poem, Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to know that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice. I'm going to read it one more time, then talk about it. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to know that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice. So there's some rhyming in there and some metaphor. So we're talking about in the very first two lines, some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. Reminds me of the people today. There are the, there's the prevailing consensus of environmental scientists that say the world's going to end by rising global temperatures. The world as we know it will be utterly different. A lot of life will be lost, right? So the increase in heat leads to wildfires as well. So heat, fire, fire is a symbol of heat. And then there are some divergent scientists that you have to go on obscure podcasts where they say, no, it's not global warming, it's global cooling. And sure enough, they bring real examples of where humanity has faced ice ages where where species have been wiped out or at least brought to an endangered uh, state from these massive sheets of ice that have covered our globe. So uh, regardless of who's right in that debate, and I don't want to get political and I'm not an expert, uh, some say uh, fire is the danger for our world. Some say ice is the danger for our world. Robert Frost uh, was writing this at a time before we got into all of this global warming and climate change uh, um, discussion. But fire and ice have been uh, two very uh, destructive and useful elements in all of our species, uh, as long as we've been around, right? Uh, even today, it's a really hot day. I feel like the world, my world is ending. I want to die. I can't think straight. It's so damn hot. That's at a personal level, but on a global level, people do die when it gets too hot. At the same time, during winter, sometimes I also have that same feeling like, oh my God, it's unbearable. And people do die when it is too cold. Uh, it could be fire from a nuclear bomb. It could be fire from the sun exploding. But just the idea of fire being a destructive element that has the potential of destroying our world uh, is true, as well as ice, right? If the sun stopped burning... Uh, and stop giving its rays, this world would also die. So whether the the sun exploded on us and sent a lot of heat or it just stopped burning and we and it, the world got too cold or whether something that we did which changed the climate or the climate just changed from uh, and became too hot or too cold, the world actually could be destroyed. And, you know, we have these debates. But then we're going to go into the personal realm where he says in the third line, from what I've tasted of, of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. So now, you know, there's these two sides of the debate. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. Well, now Robert Frost, the poet, chooses to side with those who favor fire. Why? Because from what I've tasted of desire. So he's equating desire with fire. He wouldn't be the first person to do that. Uh, there are many people who, who talk about the fire burning in your heart, right? When you want something so bad, whether it's the championship title at your uh, local boxing rink or whether it's a person who just is so desirable that it, your whole body is feels like it's consumed in flames, right? Fire, desire, uh, fire and passion. Desire is a passion. Um, so Robert Frost would rather the world go up in fire because it's so similar to desire.
But then he gives something about hate and he says, but if it had to perish twice, so I choose fire. But if it had to happen a second time, I think I know enough of hate to know that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. So ice can also uh, be a good engine of destruction. Um, but now we're talking about more of a personal feeling about it. Um, so he's had experience of the destructive forces of both fire and ice. And I think everyone who, who has lived a while has felt it. Um, have you ever, have you ever had a major change in your life? Like your whole world, your, your world, not talking about the world, but your world kind of ended because of some great desire. Like you changed your job and the city you lived in and which resulted in meeting a bunch of new friends and, you know, you kind of left the old world behind you because you just wanted this new job in this new city so bad, right? The desire, the fire pulled you towards that and sort of destroyed your old life, but you got this new life, right? Fire is of is of your desire, fire is a, is a vehicle for destruction, but also, you know, rebirth into something new. Whereas, have you ever ended your life in a city or a job, not because you desired something, but just because you hated where you were, you hated your occupation. Uh, I quit my job or I stopped talking to that friend because I just can't stand them, right? It's not through desire, it's through hate. I hate you, man, I'm never gonna talk to you again, right? So your world changes uh, or I'm leaving this country, I freaking hate it. You leave your country, your world changes. Your old world, your old way of life is destroyed. Of course, you do go to something new, right? Uh, usually from destruction, after that it comes creation, but it doesn't necessarily talk about creation there. We're just talking about destruction. But worlds are destroyed when you hate something so bad that you cut it off. Um, and then in the realm of, you know, personal relationships, I think this is where this poem can really, uh, can really hit home for a lot of us because um, people will often end a relationship that they're in, not necessarily because they hate the person, but just because they found someone else that they love so much. So that's the, the fire of desire, right? And so, sorry, this relationship is destroyed, not because I hate you, but because I am so in love with this person. So I go there. And a lot of relationships end, not because I find someone new, but because I've come to hate you. And so I ghost you, right? And that kind of feels like ice, right? So cold. You don't return my calls. You don't answer my emails. You don't wish me happy birthday, right? So small worlds of our personal life, small sections of our world, and also the global world are all are all susceptible to the destruction both of fire, like real fire and ice, like real ice, as well as the metaphorical fire, which is desire. Our civilization can destroy its old ways when we desire passionately to embark down a new course. Or we can just abandon our old ways because we hate them, right? can be used culturally. We can use it at all the various different levels because fire and ice and um, the what they might symbolize for humanity or for us personally, desire and hate, have the power to transform individuals, have the power to, to transform whole societies or anything in between, organizations, families, and all of that. So it's kind of a really short poem, but it talks about these two elements, fire and ice, as well as desire and hate and, and totally fire and desire right there together and ice and hate, right? We call a person an ice queen when they're so cold to us. Um, and a lot of people give us the silent treatment when they want to really stick a dagger. I mean, instead of sticking a dagger in our heart, which we could actually feel the blood pour down and look into your eyes, no, they just cut us off and it feels so cold. So anyways, I just wanted to talk about that. Tell me what your thoughts are down in the comments. Thank you for sharing this poem by Robert Frost, Fire and Ice. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.